After a two-week break, we finally got chapter 158 of Four Nights of the Apocalypse. Unfortunately, I have to give you guys some bad news. If you haven't heard already, Nakuba Suzuki is suffering from health issues, so after this chapter, Four Nights of the Apocalypse is going to be on an indefinite hiatus. So the return of the manga is currently unknown. At best, maybe a month or two months, or it could be longer. We don't know the severity of his health condition, so be prepared for Four Nights to be on hiatus for a while. In the meantime, I will try and fill the void with either other manga reviews from different series or different types of video discussions about the manga before it eventually returns on my thoughts on things that could happen in the future. But those will be a bit more spread out as I don't want to throw everything in right away in case the manga comes back by the end of the summer. But we probably got a pretty good chapter to leave us off with, so, so let's just dive right in. Before we jump into the review, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps and it shows you guys enjoy the content I make here on the channel and shows you want to see more. Now then, on with the chapter. Chapter 158 of Four Nights of the Apocalypse, titled, I Can't Drop the Attitude. And the cover image is honestly really nice. Gawain basically taking up the entirety of the image with Percival below her and the rest of Team Percival all at the bottom with little pieces of rubble in Camelot. Really nice. I kind of like it with Nazient also floating up in the back as well. Pretty fun. But the chapter starts off directly from the last one, where Gawain is being told that her friends have come to see her. Gawain ends up saying, Now, what do you need, father? I know you're busy, as she has a pretty posturous laugh. Her father states, Your friends have come to visit you. Should I not have let them in? As Gawain's kind of confused, being like, My friends? I don't have anyone like that. As Kay turns behind him, and Gawain, puzzled for a second, is then instantly shocked... Pretty comedic panel. As we see Percival saying, Hello, how have you been, Gawain? As Gawain just has a, honest to God, really realistic reaction to seeing Percival, just screaming and being completely confused. As he's like, wait, 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 per -per -per Percival, like, I, I, it can't be you, can it? As Percival says, oh, well, who else could it be? As Kay says, I'm sure you got a lot to talk about. Please take all the time you need. As he exits the room. Things are quiet for a second as Nazian and An are wondering if Kay's gonna end up reporting them to Arthur and the Four Evils and the Chaos Knights as they're pretty sure they probably shouldn't be here. But Gawain assures them that her father won't sell them out and to trust her on that. She states that she doesn't know why, but her father and Arthur have completely cut off ties with each other. Reasons might have to do with Arthur's with Arthur taking the throne of Camelot. Maybe it's how he's running Camelot, his methods, or because Kay just doesn't trust Arthur now with the power of chaos, or a, more of a personal thing. We have no real clue. But yeah, they have cut ties, so Kay's not going to sell them out. So we got Gawain's full-on guarantee on that. But lightening up the mood like the meathead he is, Donnie ends up making fun of Gawain and essentially just mimicking her laugh from earlier, stating, man, you're actually really cute, aren't you? As Gawain gets pissed off, and in the next panel, flicks Donnie, um, has him ricochet all around the room, causing him to hit his head. But in the process, hits one of her cabinets, and a bunch of books, tomes, and scrolls fall out to her shock, as she scrambles to get them from being seen by everybody. But An looks down and says that these are all magical tools, tomes, and a bunch of notes written about them. As they then begin to read what was written down on them, as this is Gawain's own words. It said, There is a way to transplant spirits into an inorganic vessel, but is the same possible for an organic human body? But if he was a baby infused with a life spirit, the failures keep piling up. Summoning is a tricky task, but I can't give up on it now. Not until I can yell at him to his face again. As Anna and Azigans look at each other, with Donnie saying, You did all that for Percival? As Percival looks down at Gawain, as she says, Just inviting yourselves in here, how insensitive can you be, you bunch of trash? As, well, Anna kind of really does uh, sympathize with this, as per Percival just shows up like it's nothing now. So she can't attest to how kind of stupid this was, and just happening all of a sudden. But Percival goes on to say, Hey, we're going on another adventure to save Britannia. As Gwen says, come on. Like, I can trust a man who might just up and disappear again. But Percival says, I won't, okay? I won't vanish on you again. I promise. Gwen gets up, shouts, saying, I don't need any half-hearted promises. That's an absolute order, all right? As we see Gwen tearing up after saying this to Percival. As Percival says, okay. 
Honestly, this was kind of similar to what I was expecting to happen with Gawain's reintroduction with Percival. Her kind of being happy to see him, but also being kind of, you know, demanding about it. Telling him, I don't want you going away again. You better promise me on that front. And I also like that Gawain, just like Nazienz, was spending all this time during these last two years studying spirits, transferring them into bodies to find a way to actually bring Percival back to them and just sewn him back. And that's just so goddamn sweet. Everything that happened in the Demon Realm arc really did touch her and having Percival just up and leave like that most definitely hurt her and she does want to just bring him back and talk to him about everything that happened and just lay into him like she just did now. And that's a very realistic thing to really think about and I just... I'm just happy that we got some confirmation on what Gawain was doing during these two years, especially since now she's seemingly like hiding out in Camelot, seemingly. But yeah, it's nice to show that more than Team Percival, I've been looking for ways to bring him back. We then cut to a little bit later, as we actually get some actual answers on this giant castle boat thing, which I did not expect to actually get, more or less. But they end up saying that this is a ship that can fly. It'll sail anywhere, seas, the seas, the skies, even underground, which is really cool. Percival's standing on the edge as he's taken in the air. Gawain calls out to Percival as he turns around. But in the next page, a passionate son comes in to hit Percival, as Percival dodges out of the way as Gawain launched her attack square at him. Team Percival are telling Gawain to just cut it out, but Gawain then continues to chant a spell as she creates a spiral hail attack to engulf Percival. But Percival then continuously uses his magical sword enchanting his arm to slice up all the giant pieces of hail in a brief instance with no effort. Gawain chants another spell to teleport, and in the very next panel, she goes into her brand new buff form and then slaps Percival square into the ground in an instant. But it's revealed that Percival is still up, but Gawain actually burned his hands as Percival was blocking the attack and Percival instantly heals with his hope powers. As Gwen goes on to say, you always did aggravate me. And look, I do kind of like her new buff form. To an extent, I prefer the older one, mainly because her head is way too small for her body now. It's, it's cool, but also kind of weird. I'm curious to see if this is just her new full power mode to an extent, or this is just her new buff form now that she's older. I got no clue. This does look a lot more like the one Escanor. This might be her version of it for like a brief instance that she's using it to test Percival and fight him. I don't know. We will have to learn more at some point. Gawain comes down from the air and says, I trained myself up so hard while you were having your little nap. Why the hell are you so much stronger to you little sneak as Gawain instantly turns back to her original form. Percival says, but that wasn't your full effort, was it Gawain? As Gawain says, hell no, I didn't even exercise 10%. Obviously, I'm sure Gawain most likely was not going all out in this fight because it's Percival, her friend, and probably just wanted to test him out to see what's going on to see if she is stronger than him. But her saying 10%, yeah, she's most definitely blustering on this aspect, but I, I still like the idea that she's not going all out against Percival. We still gotta see her in an actual fight to see how things go off. But Percival just gleefully goes back to Chibi fo form and just says, well... When I was a spirit, I recalled a lot about using my powers, kind of. I'm still getting used to this body, though. Which makes sense, but he's also an absolute monster. Like Donnie just said, and I find that hilarious. Off in the corner, An just yells at the two of them, saying that their fight almost gave her a heart attack. Gawain says, sorry, but I have to say, you become much more ladylike in the last two years, as she snickers. And Percival's like, yeah, and her boobs are bigger. I'm not going to lie, this is probably one of the few things outside of maybe putting in snacks that Gawain and Percival can weirdly bond over. I know it's weird, but again, Gawain's into girls, she is a bit of a perv. Percival did end up being a bit more of a perv thanks to Donnie's influence. So, I don't know why I'm trying to dissect this weird conversation, but it is what it is. But, with everything that just happened... We stop, and Gawain begins to th explain a situation for their future direction in their mission. Donnie says that right now they're going to have to hunt for Lancelot and Team Percival, right? 
which does show that they don't know where Lancelot is, which is something that was never stated in the previous chapters since the time skip. I and many others have always assumed that he's just been hiding out in Benwick, going through his own depression arc. So I'm curious to see what's going on with Lancelot if they have to say that they have to hunt down Lancelot. Maybe he's just trying to avoid people, maybe he's going out on a revenge spree, who knows. But Tristan and his team definitely is something that has been teased, and it seems like we might actually be getting this soon. Gawain says yes, and for that, there's a place we'll have to head for. As she states, the Cauldron of Anvil. I can't pronounce this goddamn name. But yeah, the very prison that Arn and Donnie were looking for at the start of the time skip, when he first got the reintroduction and when they ended up encountering Beltrop, this is their next destination. And we got an actual design for it. A literal giant cauldron. You know what? Yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at that. I have no comment. But Donnie asks the obvious question, how do they get there? Arn says that they know about the cauldron, but they don't know its exact location. But Gawain says to let her handle it. As she ends up saying, So yes, I believe Team Tristan is being held in this cauldron. But the issue is the person who runs it. Which is Beltrop, the Green Knight of the Four Perils. And their mission is to take him down. And I just love this image of Beltrop with a bunch of crosses and crucifixes in the background. Oh man, this man, ever since his introduction has exuded aura and was definitely a threat and I cannot wait to see him actually fight now. But yeah, seems like their next mission is to actually take on Beltrop in a manner and find Tristan and his team and bring them home. But this does obviously trigger On and Donnie and Percival gets serious for a moment. Donnie says, wait, are you serious? The guy's a literal monster. As Wayne says, yes, I know that, know what he's capable of, but we're about to have our best chance yet of defeating him. As Percival is asking, this is our best chance, Gawain gets serious once more and says, the cauldron is the perfect place to lock up those against the paradise of Camelot. Beltrop is going to hold an event to pick out the best prospects from those yearning to crawl out of it. He calls it the Anvin Gladiator Festival, with the final page showcasing a bunch of gladiators and warriors fighting to the death. Am, am I hearing things right? Is it what I'm thinking? We're getting a tournament arc in Four Nights of the Apocalypse. Honestly, if you told me what you'd expect from Four Nights of the Apocalypse, the very last thing I would think of is a tournament arc. Due to the very nature of Four Nights of the Apocalypse and how things are being presented, I didn't think we were gonna get, to get any sort of tournament arc in this series. But, lo and behold, Nakama's surprising us with a tournament arc. Not only getting us reintroduced to Gawain, but we're going to get a pseudo tournament arc. We're going to have to revisit Tristan and his team seemingly being held captive there. And it seems like we're going to have our best chance for the team to take on one of the four evils in a full on fight outside of what happened with Roldane in the fairy realm with Percival. What a way to end off this chapter. What a way to end things off before going off on a hi hiatus. And that really gets me hyped up. And with this setup, we might actually get Tristan versus Percival round two. And this time, Percival will be in his right mind and more of control of his power, and Tristan might be in a blind rage over what Percival did in betraying him and his father's expectation. Basically abandoning their mission and abandoning everybody. That's my whole thing on how Tristan's going to react to seeing Percival again. It's going to be interesting. I'm happy to see what, what we got with Gawain. I loved her interactions with Percival. She basically confronted Percival about him leaving. She was trying to find ways to bring him back. She got stronger. She had a brief, like, very quick fight with Percival showcasing her new buff form. Honestly, I got everything I wanted in this chapter. And I can't wait for the next chapter whenever Nakama comes back from his hiatus when he's feeling better. But those are my thoughts of this chapter. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think and your theories for what's going to happen in the future. I will do my best to make Fortnite's content every now and again during this hiatus to see what topics I will end up doing for the future of this channel until the manga eventually comes back. And if you want to give me some suggestions on potential videos to talk about, let me know in the comments also. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps and shows you guys enjoy the content I make here on the channel and shows you want to see more. And with all that said and done, I hope you all have an awesome day.